WHS 1119, are there any other ways we can tell you that it's cold out there? Well, yes, wind chill factors below zero at this hour and expected to get worse. Now you know why JCPS decided earlier today no school buses on the roads tomorrow and students will stay home to learn on another NTI day. The school buildings are going to remain closed. Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining us on the WHAS 11 night team. I'm Doug Profit. JCPS isn't the only district saying that it's too cold. We've got a big list of closings and delays rolling right at the bottom of your screen. Right now, meteorologist Colleen Peterson is tracking the wind chills and the return of even some more snow. Colleen, what's up with that? Yeah, we have more snow in that forecast on Thursday into Friday, but the focus tonight are those wind chills. Behind Doug, you just saw it's negative one here at Louisville, even though our temperatures are in the single digits, negative one. It feels like here in Jefferson County, negative three at Bowman Field and E Town. It is already negative five and it's getting colder as we head overnight tonight. Check out Indianapolis. They're at negative 14 right now, so this is going to be cold air across the state of Kentucky into Indiana. A wind chill advisory is in place. There's a wind chill warning for central Indiana, but for us, it's negative 10 range, so it is going to get rather cold, especially areas highlighted in the light blue on the map here for the next few hours. So tomorrow morning, waking up to below zero to negative 10 wind chill values. By the time we head towards the afternoon, it's going to start to feel maybe like the teens, but at least we'll get some sunshine for your Wednesday. Mostly sunny skies. Temperatures will be getting into the 30s. Still not going to be getting above freezing, but I think we'll get some snow melt by the time we head towards tomorrow afternoon. We mentioned some snow. You're not getting it tomorrow, but on Thursday, we're tracking both low pressure systems going to merge together right over the state of Kentucky and Indiana. So as I press forward, this is noon on Thursday through Thursday afternoon and Friday. Snow showers expected to fire up here across Kentucky and with another wave behind it early Friday morning. How much snow will we see out of this system and how cold is it going to get tomorrow morning? I'll have both those answers coming up, Doug. Thanks, Colleen. A reminder, now's the best time to download the free WHAS 11 app. If we get a power outage, you can keep watching WHAS 11 newscasts live on your phone. Plus, get weather alerts anytime from the First Alert Storm Team. It's free in your app store. Now to one of our top stories, the countdown to Kentucky Derby. Even on this uh, frigid day, Kentucky Derby 150 is now on. We're 108 days away. And just days after the new Derby champion is crowned this year, the PGA Championship will be held at Valhalla, crowning golf's new champion. WHS 11 night teams Alex Dieter and photojournalist Addie Hill were at the annual meeting of Greater Louisville Inc. tonight, where the CEOs of Churchill and the PGA talked about the impact of what's to come. Alex? Right, Doug. Tonight, two CEOs in charge of these two huge events. The leaders of both Churchill Downs, Inc. and the PGA of America shared the stage tonight to give Louisville business leaders a look at the huge impact their events will bring to Louisville. The 150th Kentucky Derby, the first Saturday in May, and then 10 days later, the PGA Championship returns to Valhalla, the first time since 2014. Yeah, once you've had your appetizer, you can come to the main course oh. a week later. Um. The sold out 106th championship, once again returning to the major championship venue of the Bluegrass. We're proud to have had a history here. We don't want the history, you know, to end. Uh, we want to be, you know, part of, we want the Valhalla to be a part of our Rota going forward. PGA of America CEO Seth Wall. You know, we want to be the best partner that anybody's ever had and, and we want to get invited back. But will the championship ever return? The PGA no longer owns Valhalla. Plus, the major is already scheduled in cities through 2030 and Louisville not on the list. This is the first time we've ever been here in May, so we, we haven't been able to share the stage with, with uh, Churchill Downs, but we're excited to do that. Could the 150th Kentucky Derby break the all-time crowd number? The attendance record at the Derby was set back in 2015 with 170,500 fans when American Pharoah won. We've already seen in just some of our preliminary metrics that uh, Derby 150 is going to take it to another level. So what's going to happen for 150? I'm not exactly sure what the final numbers will look like, but it's going to be really spectacular. While the numbers are still out on the 150th, Wall says the PGA is estimating 200,000 fans, $200 million in economic impact, and $5 billion for charity, when the championship once again graces Valhalla. Louisville shows up, right, and they do every time. 
A very exciting countdown. The 150th Kentucky Derby is Saturday, May 4th, and that's followed shortly by the PGA Championship, which kicks off Monday, May 13th. Alex, thank you very much. And of course, uh, we're going to have the Derby of traffic all over town for the next 10, 11 days or so. Well, people living around Churchill Downs say they want to improve their neighborhood, not just for the Derby, but for the months following. And they hope to do that through a program called Building Our Blocks. Now, the first event is going to be focused on the Lucky Horseshoe neighborhood. Well, the name for this neighborhood is so appropriate. That's because it includes homes within the boundaries of Churchill Downs, Central Avenue, Taylor Boulevard, Longfield, and Oakdale Avenue. WHS 1119's Taylor Woods spoke with neighbors to find out what they like to see done. Transforming the Lucky Horseshoe neighborhood. These are things that are going to one day, it's going to spruce it up quite a bit. The name of the neighborhood is a giveaway. It sits in the shadow of Churchill Downs. Residents living here want a cleaner neighborhood year round, not just derby time. So on April 6th, they're having Bob building our own blocks. When the eyes of the world are upon this neighborhood and this community, on that first weekend in May, I really hope that they can see how great Louisville is from the people that are right here. Metro Council member Jennifer Chapel is hearing what residents want to see in their community. They're collaborating ideas to not just make Lucky Horseshoe pretty, but livable. A community garden. Those are the things we need. Like, yes, a green space would be absolutely lovely. Several ideas are on the table from planting trees to home repairs, checking smoke detectors, along with community partners like Metro Animal Services conducting an animal vaccine clinic. And instead of of asking them to come to us, we can literally go to their doorstep and say, what do you need? The countdown to Derby 150 is on and homes, alleyways and yards inside the Lucky Horseshoe neighborhood will be transformed to help welcome in horse racing fans. Housing displacement and more grocery stores coming to the area were among the conversation. Aaron Smith lives in Lucky Horseshoe and says the cleanup effort isn't enough. It needs to go deeper. It needs to go a lot deeper. This is not just a surface thing because sometimes it feels like as a native Louisvillian, it feels like we clean up for Derby, but what about the rest of the year? What about the Louisvillians who live here? Smith is hoping this only ignites the fuel for Louisvillians to start taking better care of Lucky Horseshoe at all times throughout the year. Let's not lose the pulse on the actual residents who have lived here their entire lives. Until then, they and others are looking forward to the big day in Louisville. Taylor Woods, WHAS 1119 on your side. And a heads up, another planning session is going to be held Saturday, January 27th from 10 in the morning until 1130 at the Kentucky Derby Museum. Organizers will canvas the neighborhood in February before the Building Our Blocks event happens on Saturday, April 6th. Tonight, sad news to tell you about. The Louisville Urban League and Louisville community are mourning the loss of the man they say left a towering legacy for our community. Ben Richmond, the former longtime Urban League president and CEO, passed away earlier today. He served in that role from 1987 to 2015. Tonight, the current league leader, Lyndon Pryor, talked to us about the impact Richmond had on this community, specifically in the business world. Because Ben's focus during his tenure was so much about business and getting business to do the equitable thing. Um, in the building of the Yum Center, Ben ensured that the spin with minority contractors was as high as it could be and the highest at that time in all of Kentucky, in all of Kentucky's history. In addition to better economic development, Richmond is also an advocate for education, something he spoke to us about in 2010. We are lagging behind and uh, the data is telling us that uh, we're going to need a much better prepared workforce and so we need to increase the rate of young people going to school, going to college and completing and so we have some work to do there. Arrangements for Ben Richmond are still pending and will be released once they're finalized. Richmond's death comes as Louisville lost another leader over the weekend, J. Michael Brown, who was helping transform Simmons College of Kentucky. As prosecutors move forward with their case against the former Clark County, Indiana Sheriff Jamie Noel, they now say his wife could be charged as well. The state is now prepared to move forward on criminal charges. Um, against certain defendants, uh, primarily Misty Knoll. Rick Hurdle. Special Prosecutor Rick Hurdle made that announcement during a hearing today as Misty Knoll sat right behind one row behind her husband. Jamie Knoll is facing 15 charges, ranging from official misconduct to theft and tax evasion. Hurdle didn't specify what kind of charges they could bring against Misty, instead looking for guidance 
on how to bring the charges because there's a special judge in the case. Defense attorney Larry Wilder of Southern Indiana objected to an arrest when the jurisdictions and bond weren't clear. Just to punish them in advance seems a little bit like a strategy that is outside the bounds of all of the trial rules that have been invoked by the Supreme Court. The defense is also appealing Knowles' initial bond decision, which he did pay. That appeal is going to the Indiana Court of Appeals. A Louisville Metro police sergeant shot in 2021 is now mourning the loss of his wife in a car crash over the weekend. She was there for him, you know, through all the challenging times as he was there for her. And now he has to move forward without her. He the Louisville Metro Police Foundation is now raising money to help Sergeant Chris Lane and his family. Police say his wife, Erin Dita, died in a crash on Taylorsville Lake Road Saturday night. Their 14-year-old daughter was also hurt, but is expected to make a full recovery. The couple also has a 10-year-old son. Sergeant Lane was shot in the face in November of 2021 while working off-duty in a construction zone. Another man was killed. Foundation Executive Director Rebecca grignan Reeker says they helped the family then and will help them now. Police officers give up holidays with their families. They give up time with their families so that we can be safe, so that we can celebrate with our families. And now we can step in and we can support him while he remembers and honors his wife. Aaron Dita was a bilingual instructor at JCPS, most recently at Chansey Elementary School in Eastern Jefferson County. If you'd like to help the family, we have a link to the fundraiser on our website, whas11.com. New tonight on the WHS 11 19 House leaders have revealed their budget bills. While they propose boosting education funding, they don't go as far as guaranteeing teacher raises. The GOP budget proposal calls for more money for the state's funding formula for K through 12 schools and for student transportation. House Speaker David Osborne of Prospect says they will strongly suggest to administrators that school personnel deserve and need the raises. Governor Andy Beshear had proposed an 11% raise for teachers and he wants universal pre-K. Instead of preschool, Republican lawmakers have proposed additional funding to maintain higher reimbursement for providers.